What's going on, everybody? I have a very, very special video and a special guest for you today. One of the directors of Studio Taco. Well, I, wow, Studio Taco. What was that? Let me start Studio over. Studio Taco. It's <laughs> uh, a better name. I have one of the directors of Studio Taka here live with me for an interview. And if you guys are not following the Studio Taka channel so far, I don't know what you're doing with your lives. They are creating the best animated Berserk adaptation that has ever existed out of any of them. I will link their channel down below in the description. You guys absolutely need to subscribe to them. Check them out. It's a whole team over there doing great work. And I have Alex, one of the directors, here with me today. Alex, how you doing? Hey man, thank you for the uh, the lovely welcome there. Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks a lot, and thank you for having me on. Absolutely, man. This is a long time coming. I, I've been a fan of you guys for a really, really long time, um, and I know that I was asked to be part of you guys. I think you did a live stream before the release of the last episode. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. uh, I was asked to kind of come on for a little bit, but I happened to be busy that day. I was like an hour out of town. There was no way I could have done it. I was super disappointed. I couldn't be a part of it, but. Yeah, we're finally here, man. I finally got to sit down and talk to you, one of you guys, so I'm excited. So um, just go ahead and introduce yourself. Just say anything you want. Introduce yourself, name, age, what you do for Studio Taka, just anything you feel like. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, I'm Alex. Uh, I go by Ikebal online. It's my little handle with my uh, my funny little squiggly ball of eyes. Um, I'm the creative director of the motion comic, and I also do the voice work of Guts, and uh, in the latest episode, also The Old Man. And... Um, yeah, I I am currently rapidly approaching thirty, so that's a that's a lovely feeling, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah yeah we've been doing uh, the episodes now for quite a while. I think um, I I actually started right at the end of episode two, so I'm still fairly fresh to the project. Um, but I on episode three I was very hands on, and that was uh, sort of my baby. Right, on. I think that was my favorite one so far, actually. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I got a main question for you is, obviously, how did you first discover Berserk? And, like, what was your experience with it? Did you first watch it through the anime or the manga? Did someone introduce it to you? Did you just find it some random rainy day when you were, like, looking up crazy shit on the internet? Like, how did you first discover the series? Oh, um... The very first time I was a kid, I think I had a VHS of it, and or, or something like that. I remember watching the first three episodes when I was very little, and then years go by, and a good friend of mine was saying, oh, have you seen Berserk? And we watched a bit of it together, and I never finished it. And then years on, I, um, I watched uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Um, I hadn't really watched an anime since, like, the Toonami days. And really enjoyed it. And I said, like, yeah, yeah, I'd be interested in watching something else. And uh, he was like, oh, you should watch Berserk. So I watched the 97 anime. And when I finished it, I was like, no, wait, what's, what happens next? Where does, where does this go? And um, then I tried to watch the... Um, I tried to watch the... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I tried to watch the 2016 anime after that. And I think I, I got to the bit where Mosca slams his face into the ground and I turned it off. And I just thought, this is this has got awful. So... <laughs> So I was, I was very bitter about it for a couple of weeks. Yeah, you made it farther than I did, man. <laughs> How far did you make it? Uh, I got like two episodes in. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't blame you. It was, it's god awful. Um, but I, I just remember thinking like, oh, I really want to see where this goes. So um, eventually I, I started reading the, the manga and uh, me and another uh, good friend of mine, uh, we, we started reading at the same time. And so that was kind of our summer, just reading Berserk and, and discussing it and blah, blah, blah. And then the original friend, I tried to get him back into the, uh, the like, get back into Berserk, get back to reading it or something like that, or just get him into it in general. Because he'd only seen the 97 and the 2016 anime. And he said, nah, I don't want to, don't really want to get into reading a manga, but I'd watch a motion comic if there was something like that on it. So we ended up YouTubing Berserk motion comic, and ah. um, we watched the, the first episode of it on Studio Taka's channel, and... Um, I told this story before, and they, they, they probably won't hate me too much for saying this, but I, we had a good laugh about it because the, the first episode wasn't the best. But it was really sweet, and we thought, like, ah, oh, these guys are really trying. And it's like, so I think it was that night I went back and I ended up dropping a message to them, and be like, hey, if you ever need any help with anything, then uh, let me know. And it spiraled into what it is today. That's crazy. So, so you weren't part of the Studio Taka's conception. You came into it a little bit later. 
No, no, I, I, I came in quite a lot later. I think the project had been going with the, the original guys for about, like, three years before I joined. Okay, that's interesting. So, I, I've always wondered, um, how how many people, like, go into Studio Taka? Like, I, I guess I'm generally curious, like, where the idea originated from, uh, if the guys have kind of told you, like, its origin story, but then also, like... How does it go down? Like, can you explain like the general process of it to me? Yeah. So, in terms of the conception of it, from what I know of it, it was two guys having a conversation in a Discord server that ended up uh, ballooning, and it it turned into what it is now. I, I think it was just other people who probably were equally as upset with the 2016 anime getting into it, and um, yeah, just wanting to tell the story properly um and also cover the black swordsman stuff that hadn't been done that that's my understanding of it um in terms of getting into the project usually it's just a case of uh people message uh the the project managers or they uh you know respond to one of the recruitment videos or something like that and uh join in and uh when you say the process do you mean like the process to creating an episode or just getting involved I guess uh, what I mean is, like, is there a group of writers that do it first and decide, like, how they want it to be paneled, uh, how they want the animation to go, and then does it get handed off to different animation people, and then, uh, you know, how do you, you said you direct, so, like, how exactly do you direct? Are you guys all uh, together or constantly sending videos to one another? Just the whole, like, idea, like, the of behind yeah. the process. Yeah, cool. So we have a Discord server that um, is just the Studio Attacker Discord server, and uh, everybody's in there. We have uh, team leads for each department. So there's me um, as creative director, and then we have uh, Alexander, uh, another Alex, who is the animation director. And he and I work pretty closely. Um, at the beginning, um, when I first joined, what we did was we sat down and we went panel by panel through the manga. Um, we sort of discussed how we wanted certain scenes to look and how we wanted to do things. And then after that, we then send off the uh, individual panels to different animators. And we slowly, slowly start to build uh, all of the animations for the episode. During that time, I'm usually going around like trying to get uh, voice actors and trying to get um, musicians and sound effects artists and stuff like that in. And we so sort of map out how the episode is going to go. And then... After the animation is complete, I put together a rough edit of the whole thing. And um, then from there, we start putting in the voice work. We start putting in the, uh, the sound effects and the music. And uh, I'll sit there with the composers and give them like big lists of, you know, like tracking sheets and stuff like that and timestamps of how I want everything to go. Um, and then, yeah, then we, we, we kind of combine all of those elements together and get your final product. That's crazy, man. Like, I am friends with a couple of people that do animations, and I was, I mean, obviously I'm, I, I didn't think it was easy to do, but the process that they have told me to, like, create animations for people or, like, doing commissions and stuff, like, it's so difficult to do, which I'm sure is a, probably another reason why there's so many, uh, so much of a gap in between episode releases, because it is really, really hard to do. Um, and so... I, I guess I guess what I want to ask is like where did the animators come from? Did they just kind of like jump in, sort of like seeing the idea, thought it was really cool, wanted to be a part of it, or are there some people that are just like hardcore dedicated to Berserk and this is what they wanted to do and it's like the perfect opportunity for them? They're like, yes, I want to create a Berserk adaptation. I want to use my skills towards this. Is that kind of like how they came into it? Yeah, the, yeah, it's a mix. I mean, there are some people who are just really big Berserk fans and great animators, and they, they just want to get involved. And there are other people as well who just go like, oh, this seems cool, and, you know, they, they jump in and, and do panels here or there. Um, I mean, for instance, like, when, it, the, the ending animation for uh, Episode 2 and 3 was done by a, an animator at Warner Brothers because he just saw it and was like, oh, this is really oh, wow. cool, and I want to I wanna do something Berserk-related. Um there's a few of us like that who, you know, like uh, our sound designer Bass and myself and, and, and other people in the project who, you know, we're, we're professionals, but we wanted to work on something berserk related and the chances of us ever getting to was so slim. It was, a, it was like, this is the closest thing we'll ever get to, you know. That's so freaking cool, man. Um, 
I, I was wondering, like, do you guys have a like a Patreon or like a funding thing? Like, is there compensation going on, or is everyone just kind of doing it out of passion? Um, we do have a Patreon, but we're not earning that much at the moment. So, um, it, it's all out of passion. Um, with with the Patreon money, we use that mainly to buy things like asset packs and licenses for things for people. Um, we've bought a couple of like drawing tablets and things like that. Um, okay. But yeah, for the for the most part, it's all. Um, it, it's all just a, a big passion project for Berserk. That makes it like even more amazing in some way. You know, it's like because Berserk just means so much to so many people that we just want to spread our love for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I did, Berserk is a story that really touched me when I first read it. And it's, it's you know, I, I got into it very late, you know. So when I when I watched it or read it for the first time, it was... Uh, you know, a bit later in life, but I was like, oh, wow, this is really, really good. And I don't really get absorbed into stories too much anymore, but that just hooked me. And so I, I read all 300 and something chapters in, in I think, like six weeks. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I feel the same way, man. Like Berserk, like I know it sounds like super corny to say, but like Berserk really did change my life. Like it, it taught me things. It sent me on a different direction. It sparked passion in me. It like got me noticed on youtube like i have so so much love for berserk and so much gratitude for kentaro miura for dedicating literally 30 years of his life to create this project man and it's just like it's so cool how many different people are inspired in different ways like some people start making art and some people are just kind of like inspired to live their life some people look at guts and they're like i need to go to the gym and get jacked you know <laughs> like whatever the case may be <laughs> like it inspires people man this is why i say like fiction and storytelling is important because you know it might just be fantasy it's not real yada yada but like the purpose of art is being able to inspire you know, and I think that the, there's no greater uh, purpose for it. And also, I think Studio Taka is pretty much a showcase of like, look at like, look at all these different types of talent between animation and directing and voice acting and all this stuff kind of comes together. And it's all because we were inspired in one point in our lives, you know? Yeah, no, I, t I totally agree with you. Berserk is very inspirational. And it's one of those stories that it really does touch people. And um I mean, bless him. It's it's a huge loss uh, with with Mira. It's it's yeah. it's pretty gutting. I mean, it, it's one of the few stories that I think has really resonated with me. And uh, knowing that we will, ne well, it depends on what happens uh, now with with his team. But it seems like we're never going to get a proper ending to it. Um, and that's it's a real sad one. And I think that uh, after his passing, that was one of those things that really kicked off a lot of the passion for episode three i think it was mm -hmm. just like uh, we really need to tell this properly and and you know now we're at a, a point where we have so many incredibly talented people on this project and everything is just the quality just keeps ramping up i mean episode four is already looking immensely better than three um and it's just yeah all totally passionate people all getting involved with this for the same reason and it's really cool to see that uh that leads me into my next question when we get in episode four <laughs> okay um whoa. <laughs> it's a difficult one to answer um i really okay. really hope this year i really do um but we've had a couple of pitfalls recently i mean uh, for example uh our animation director alexander is from ukraine so that has uh oh, been shit. a bit of an issue of like yeah yeah but um he he is still working on the project the wow. uh he, he's still <laughs> yeah. piling through animation and he's just like uh a, an absolute powerhouse that guy so uh we really hope this year definitely but um i i will not lie and say definitely this year because then if we're late people might be annoyed at me right right i just thought i could get that out of you um <laughs> but best wishes to him man that's a that's a horrible situation we don't need to get into that or anything but uh yeah just i i hope he's doing all right and makes it through all the chaos you know yeah it's all right yeah um i also heard that the guy and i his name escapes me i should have looked it up right before i started this interview so my bad on that but the guy that did the uh, is doing the animation for the Guts versus Rosine scene. Did he join oh, Studio Taka? Is that true? Yeah, yeah, Mark Raymer. Yeah, he did. Yeah. What's his um, name again? Sorry. Uh, Mark Raymer. Mark um, Raymer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And if anyone hasn't seen uh, the the trailer for his uh, Guns versus Rosine animation, do check that out. It 
looks amazing. Um, yeah, he did. He joins the attacker. We we actually uh, reached out to him a while ago uh, about doing the voice acting and sound design for his project. So we uh, started doing that. So basically, it it was kind of a studio attacker will be doing the voice work and the and the sound design and whatever for for his project. And then a little while after, he was like, hmm. Maybe I could join you guys and help you out with a few panels. So, yeah, it's... Uh, Sick. Yeah. Man, I can't wait to see that, that he's been coming up. That, like, 30-second clip got me, like, so hard. I was like, I'm, re <laughs> I'm ready for this. I can't wait. Yeah, I know the feeling. I, I, I recorded a bunch of screens for him uh, recently, and uh, some of the animations he did were so powerful. I'm like, oh, I need to match this. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's killed my throat yeah. a bit, but... Because that, that is my favorite fight of the entire series. I just think it's just absolutely chaotic and brutal. I just, I, I can't wait for that. Yeah, it's, it's um, amazing, yeah. Yeah. So uh, my next question, um, it's just kind of like about Berserk in general, and you commented on it a little bit, but where Berserk is right now, you know, not technically canceled, but unlikely to continue. I, I was just wondering your thoughts and opinions, or maybe you can share what the other uh, the other guys and gals at Studio Taka have said. Like, where do you see Berserk's future going? Like, do you think it will continue? Do you think it won't? Uh, if they do continue it, should it be like a separate series, like a Berserk the Final Act, to separate it from Kentaro Miura's work? Yeah. I, I guess like, what's your general opinion about where it should go and where you want it to go? Yeah, I. <laughs> There's a few different opinions floating around at Studio Taka. I mean, my personal thoughts on it are, honestly, I, I wouldn't mind just seeing what his notes were and then just mm -hmm. putting it to bed. Um, yeah. That's my personal thoughts. But then at the same time, uh, a couple of the guys were saying recently they, they would like to see, like a, I think they said it like a, a DX version or something where it's, uh, you know, they continue it without the original creator. They call it something else. Uh, I guess kind of yeah. like Dragon Ball Z to Dragon Ball GT or something. Right, yeah. Um, and, and then they just kind of follow the rough outline and do their own thing. I think that would be cool too. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a delicate subject because I think no matter what, you're not going to get uh, what Mira really wanted, no matter what. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't doubt that his team are incredibly talented and um, I'm sure they would do a good job, but whether or not it would be the same is arguable yeah i'm of the mind like for me personally i i just i want a conclusion to berserk like selfishly because i just because the journey has gone on so long you know 30 years of of this media it's just like i want to be able to see the conclusion to guts story and if miura has notes about it or where he wanted the story go or chapter outlines and stuff i would be perfectly okay if his team followed that and drew it, did the artwork, followed his story, and finished the story. But I can also understand it from the other point of view where if it's not Miura, it's not really Berserk, so I get that. Um, you know, I also thought if they created a whole separate series for the final arc, like end Berserk at volume 41, so you have the Kentaro Miura era, but then do like a, you know, 10 volume whatever conclusion, that way if you so choose... To continue it and see a conclusion in that way you can if not you haven't tainted the kentaro miura era you know you still have berserk proper and it ends at volume 41 and that's it so i, yeah, I don't know I, no matter what you do people are going to be upset about it so it's a really really tough situation I, yeah i think that would probably be the the best kind of it would be a good outcome i think I, i've heard that idea mentioned a few times now and yeah, it would be nice to see an ending, don't get me wrong. I, I think just, for my own personal satisfaction, I'd be happy to just see the notes. Even if he just wrote Griffith dies, I'd be like, okay, cool. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah. That's that. <laughs> that, would yeah. Be, that would be nice to see, actually. It'd be very cathartic. It would be. Um, very, yeah. <laughs> uh, just some silly questions to kind of kind of uh, continue this and before we wrap it up. So, uh, who is the best Berserk waifu? Oh, man. Probably Casca. Yeah, I go for Casca. <laughs> yeah, Casca yeah, kicks ass, and uh, yeah, honestly, their 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 romance reminds me uh, too much of me and my fiance. Was, uh... Right on. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Fair enough. Yeah, it is hard to not pick anyone besides Casca because she is she's Casca. You know. Yeah, damn right. 
Yeah. Um, what was your favorite berserk, if you have one, uh, favorite kill or like favorite action fight sequence? Um, you know, I really liked the one when he gets the berserker armor for the first time, uh, when he's fighting yeah, uh, Dumbbelt, yeah. Dragon Guy. I love that bit. Um, I love how his legs snap and he snaps them back into place. And uh, oh yeah, dude, yeah. it's so when his like hand is his arm is twisted in the opposite direction, and it just like crunches back into place. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I oh, love man. that fight. If we ever, I mean, the chances of us ever getting to there, I, I think somebody <laughs> in uh, 2042. Somebody calculated it recently. By the time we finished all of the Black Swordsmen, it would be 17 years at this current rate. Oh god! So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> 200 right years on. when we finally get there. I'm looking forward to animating that part. That'd be amazing, man. I would love to see that. There, there's so many... I mean, this is why we need an anime adaptation anyways, because there's so many things I would love to see uh, in, in live action. Uh, what's your favorite Berserk arc out of all of them? That's a tough one. I've been talking about that recently. I, I'm, I'm going to probably say Conviction, because that oh, okay. also cool. includes Lost Children. Yeah. Um, but I also really liked Moskus as a villain. I thought yeah. Moskus was great. Um, Mosgus is so good, dude. He's my, besides obviously Griffith, he's my favorite antagonist in the whole series. Yeah, he's he's amazing. I, I really liked him when he came up and he was just so unapologetically mad. Yeah. Um, and, and so convicted by his own ideas uh, that, yeah, you, you just, well, I guess that's why it's called conviction. Those are the scariest villains are the ones that truly believe everything they're doing is right. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like, he believes that like, he has that divine authority. Yeah, exactly. That scene when he takes that woman down, he's just like, you know, oh, you were stinging for your baby. I understand. And then, he's, yeah. <laughs> and then he does that face, and it's the, a sin is still a sin. It's like, but you still sinned, yeah, so exactly. too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. Uh, do you have a favorite apostle? Oh, um, hmm. Tricky one. Uh... <laughs> You know what? This is me being terrible with names. I, I just thought of the apostles, and then I forgot his name. The brain guy. I, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Looking oh, like a, a oh, great like person to be directing the project. Yeah. Void from the God Hand? Is that what you mean? Void. Thank right you. On, yeah. Right I, you know what? Honestly, this sounds terrible. I just thought of him, and then I thought of Slan. <laughs> and I was like, eh, Slan's pretty cool. Slan's hot. And then <laughs> I often think of Slan myself. <laughs> yeah, right. But that's another story. Yeah. Yeah, I get, it's um, Void or Slan. They're both cool. Yeah. Well, since they're they're technically God hands, so who who would be your favorite apostle? Though? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I misunderstood the question there. Um, no, apostle, you're good. You're good. Uh, I can't believe I really did like the slug count. I thought the slug count was really cool. Um, and yeah. I'm really looking forward to getting to him in uh, not the next episode, but episode five when we finally get to do him. That's going to be fun. <laughs> I, you know, um, I. Tell me what you think about this, and I'm kind of like I'm like 90% serious when I say this. Uh, so it's kind of a running joke on my channel that I make fun of Zondark as a character, <laughs> <laughs> just because he's kind of like big, oafish, and stupid. How funny would it be if I did the voice acting for Zondark in the Studio Taka series? I'm just throwing that out there because <laughs> I would be totally willing to do it. Yeah, why not, man? Just for yeah, the meme. Yeah, totally for the meme. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Just for the meme, I would totally <laughs> yeah, let's do, it. do it. Yeah. So just send that out to the guys. Just let them know the offers out there. Like I'll totally do it. I'll even do them in like an Arnold Schwarzenegger voice if Hell you want yeah. me to. That'd yeah, be that'd great. be funny. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and then I guess the last question I had on my list, and you don't really need to comment on it if you don't want to, but very recently Berserk got very popular on twitter and whatnot for the uh extensive violence that in it is in it and how horrible it is and how it should be canceled uh and and i made a whole video on that but um it just like how ridiculous is that really like it, as if villainous characters cannot be evil and we cannot read dark stories anymore it's just uh very crazy how that happened yeah i saw your video on it and i i just i found that whole thing mad because berserk's one of those stories where the the heroes aren't really heroes, you know, and it's yeah. it's human, you know, and and the reality is absolutely. Is that I, I was seeing comments calling Mira a pedophile and all sorts of crazy stuff. Oh and, my god, you know, ridiculous. It, it, yeah, it is, and it's just it's one of those things where it's like no one's reading that story and going like, oh, I really enjoy watching this. The whole mm -hmm. point is it's shocking, it's dark, it's horrible. You know, it, it's not yeah. meant to be something you enjoy. 
it's meant to be a story that's trying to tell a narrative and you know we, we've been talking about it a bit recently in the studio because berserk at its heart is, is a story about trauma survivors right and Absolutely. people who are trying to persevere in the face of darkness and that's what those characters do to suggest for a second that the story is somehow uh you know it's all sick and twisted and written by a madman and stuff like that it's like you're misunderstanding the point of the story mm -hmm. um you know yep. for a lot of people i know like berserk has been uh incredibly empowering and has been something that's helped them through a lot of tough times so you know it is what it is but i definitely disagree yeah, yeah, you know that's that is kind of like one of the setbacks is that people don't know what Berserk is. They haven't read it. They see it on a surface level. They just see a panel of violence, and they don't understand like the power that is within the manga is to showcase how you can persevere and struggle against such a dark, chaotic world. And one of the things I appreciate so much about Miura is how unafraid he is to tackle those serious adult subjects, but he packages it in like a fun dark fantasy so you know there's knights and there's sword fighting and there's all this fun stuff but like the true message that he's putting through is how you can go through these horrible experiences and still continue living you know what i mean and uh people just don't they don't want to take the time to understand that and that's you know that's fine that's on them that's their prerogative they don't not everyone needs to be a berserk fan but uh i just hate when the series gets misrepresented you know what i mean yeah same but you know that that's something that could be said for a lot of, of of stories i mean if you take uh you know you could take a scene from game of thrones which is incredibly shocking and just show, show somebody that and they're gonna go oh um <laughs> out of context you know it, it's not great but within the universe and within the context of it, it it's meaningful and it, it has a purpose i think that's what's great about berserk and you know to to get slightly personal for a second here you know guts is a character i really connected with um and had a lot of well, you know not quite similarities i haven't had my arm cut off or anything <laughs> like that but you know i've yeah i've gone through um I've, you know been through some some similar experiences i guess in sort of a, a layered version but you know mm -hmm. you you kind of find characters like that and you go like oh, it's nice to see like a story that has this hope in it that, yeah because berserk does have a lot of hope and it has a lot of you know it's it's struggling to survive to keep going to get to a better day mm -hmm. and that's i think that's a great message i really do it's like that scene on the beach you know when he's looking at the the new cast of characters that he's found and, yeah um you know remembering the band of the hawk and everything and you or, or falcon whatever you want to call them and uh, sort of getting to that headspace of like, oh, I never thought I'd have this again, but here I am. That's a, that's a really touching moment. And right, there's a lot yeah. of moments like that in Berserk. That's the thing is because there are so many moments in Guts's life where it would be so much easier to just roll over and die or just accept your fate or just say, screw it, this is too much, I'm not going to do it. But then he gets to those moments, right? Moments like that where he sees Casca smile again or, you know, he goes through hell to like, get her to a place where she can be restored and it's like none of that would have been possible if he didn't keep moving forward you know what i mean it's like he didn't just do it for himself he did it for everyone around him you know and that's that's why it's important to keep going too it's not always just about us it's about the people in our lives also but we could go on and on about <laughs> the various emotional yeah, moments could, of berserk it's yeah. crazy man it's such it's such a beautiful story yeah it is yeah, uh, yeah i think um, you summed it up well yeah, yeah. So I guess uh, that'll pretty much wrap it up. I guess if there's any kind of final um, things you want to say or announcements or maybe where people can follow you online or follow Studio Taka, um, I'll link the channel down below in the description. And if you guys have a Patreon, I'll link that down there as well. But any final kind of thoughts? I Honestly, man, thank you just so much for having me on. It's, it's been a pleasure. And um, yeah, I as for any kind of links or anything like that, um, if you check out the Studio Ataka uh, channel, that would be great. Um, my own personal YouTube channel has weird puppetry stuff on there. Not much of it, but it <laughs> will in the future. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that, that's about it. Also follow Mark Raymer, who's doing the amazing uh, Rosine versus Gartz fight. That's going to be awesome as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely follow that. I was going to ask... Um, Maybe you can get me in contact with him, I'm not sure, but when he releases that, I kind of want to do like a reaction video to it, but I don't want to get like 
flagged. So maybe we could work something out and then he'll let me do that. Yeah, I'm sure he would. Yeah, he's, he's a really nice guy. I'm sure he'd be down for that. Yeah. Right on. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for being here. I'm great to have you. And uh, I'd love to be on the Taka channel someday as well, if you guys will have me. So other than that. Uh, yeah, man, I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks Definitely. for watching, guys. Like we'll, the video. we'll have you on a Zondak. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, dude, I will totally play Zondak. 100%. <laughs> But all right, guys, thanks for watching. Give a like, give a comment, go subscribe to them down below, and uh, I'll talk to you next time.